So in this episode, we're going to look at php.env. What this is, is a loader to load .env files into your project. And now it puts them into the EMV and server super global arrays. This allows you to put configuration for your application inside of a .env file, which is then can be shared between all your developers. So normally in production, um, it's best practice to be putting environment variables inside of the server configs or actually in the operating system environment variables itself. But this is not really practical when it comes to development and being able to share them configurations between developers because often developers will be developing on different platforms and have different configurations. So let's uh, get going with this. I'm going to clone down my scratch pad again and work from in there and you're welcome to clone it as well. Let's clone that down and go into it and do a composer install. That just gets the Whoops error library for us. And now let's open this up in PHP Storm. So now that's set up, let's install the .env library. And that's with a composer require vlucas forward slash php .env. So now we have that installed, we can bring it into our project and start using it. So at first we need to create a .env file for us to actually read. So let's just create a new file. And we just simply call this dot env. So what this is, is a key value pair file. So we put the uh, key in and then obviously the value for that key. So we can do something simple to get going. So let's do app underscore env. And that can equal, say, dev for development. I'm just going to save that. I'll switch back to our index file. And now we need to load this. Okay, so we want to do .env equals bring in the .env library and we want to create from our current dir where our .env file stored. Obviously, if you have this in a different location, um, you need to pass the path of the .env file into it. Then we can just call a method called load onto the .env and that will load in the .env for us. So now if we do, let's just echo out some pre-tags, get some nice formatting. And if we dump out um, server, now let's um, let's start up a, a local PHP server. So it's php dash s local host, and we'll just give it a port of 8,000 for now. Now let's uh, head over to our browser, load this up. And now this is the um, server super global. And you can see on the end here, we've got our app env, which equals dev. And that's coming from our .env file. So it also puts it into the underscore env super global. So let's just uh, dump that out. And you see there's only one item then there, which is our config. So we can get items out by simply calling the key. And PHP has a built-in method for that called get env and then we can just pass it the key that we want to get out we want to get app env we just dump this out and take a look and we see we get the string back de uh, dev so we can put as many items in this file as we want um, it's just one item per line so we can do something like app name and we can equal that to my app hit save on that and then in here we could um, we can just echo that out and we echo out my app so we could use that in in the uh, page title the other way this uh, we could use this is with the EMV we could actually wrap the whoops error library so we could do something like this we could say if get emv app emv is exactly equal to dev then load in the whoops error library so we will need to put this up above there because it needs that to check and then the whoops error library will only be loaded into our application if we're in dev mode which is obviously pretty good. You don't want that uh, loading up in live. 
So another feature of this library is you can actually nest variables inside of other ones. So this is pretty good for paths. So let's say if we had um, a root path, we set that equal to uh, var dub dub dub. Right, so, and then, and then we could have a, say, app path, which is equal to, and then we use dollar sign in brackets, and then we can bring in another, one of the other variables. So we can do root path, and then just tack on the end of it, say, app. And then inside of our application, if we just dump out, app underscore path you can see it's combined both the root path and the app path into one variable so another feature of this library is we can check whether something has been loaded from the file and we can do that with the required so after we've loaded it we can say dot env required and we want to make sure the app underscore env variable has been set Otherwise, we can't check what environment we're in. So let's do app underscore env. Now, if we do a refresh, we should see that it goes through. Now, if we remove that from our config file, now give it a refresh, that fails because it can't find that uh, app env key in the .env file. So just put that back in. Uh, so you can actually pass an array of items here. So if you wanted that and say you must pass a DB name as well. So if you just save that, it'll throw a, an exception again that it, it can't find that key. So you can put um, as many items in this as you want. So let's just make something up here so we get past that. DB name equals test. And we just give that a refresh. And we're loads the file again. So another thing you can tack onto the end of um, of the required uh, is not empty. So you can check that the values are not empty. So let's say not empty. And if you head over to our EMV file again, let's just uh, leave db name blank. Let's give this a refresh. So this gives us another exception thrown um, that the variable is empty. Let's give this, put the name back in. Give this a refresh and there you go, it's working again. So another thing that you can check is um, the type. So you can check whether it's an integer or a boolean and that is with is integer and is boolean. So let's create a variable in here called app cost and we'll give that uh, an integer of 10. So what we can do now here is say .env and required is app underscore cost and we need to make sure that it is an integer. Give that a refresh, that loads perfectly fine. So let's just change this and let's say ABC. Now because it's not an integer energy anymore, it'll throw us an exception. So another thing we can do is give it a list of allowed values. So let's say our .env and we can say required and we want to make sure the app env is set. We want to make sure that the app env is one of these values. So it can either be dev or it can be live. Now we might want to do this because our application might only be looking for dev and live and if a a developers put something else in obviously we don't want the application to go any further so if we just give that a refresh it works fine now because we set it to dev let's say somebody set it to let's say somebody set it to production by mistake now if we give this a refresh and um, we'll throw an exception because it's not one of the uh, valid options in the array so that's everything for the .env loader um, give me a like and a subscribe if you like the content. There'll be more of these coming. If you've got any ideas for packages that you want me to review, even ones that you've written yourself, just leave me a comment or drop me a message.